This video is going to help you progress with your trigonometry. Now what you've done previously is fairly um, low level stuff with trigonometry on triangles. Uh, we're going to look at some more sophisticated trigonometry and looking at graphs and equations uh, involving sine, cos and tan. So first of all let's have a look at what those graphs look like. So if we draw the graph of y equals sine x it looks like this and that um, then gets repeated this goes through the x-axis at 180 and 360. It has a maximum of 1 and a minimum of minus 1. Um, so we've got that point there at 90 and 270. This graph is um, symmetrical and repeats, so it looks like that. And it will carry on um, to infinity in both directions. Now we don't actually need to show that extra bit for now, so we're just going to remove that. Now if we talk about the y equals cos x graph, that is very similar. It's also a wave pattern, um, but it's not quite the same. This one starts at 1 instead of starting at 0 in the origin. Um, it's got a maximum of 1 and minus 1 again. It um, goes through the x-axis at 90 and 270 and repeats every 360 degrees just like the sine curve does. So it looks like that. Okay, now the tan graph looks like this. A little bit different. Um, it's got asymptotes at 90 and minus 90 and it repeats every 180 degrees. So the sine and cos graphs, they repeat every um, 360, but the tan graph repeats every 180. And that goes on forever in both directions as well. Okay, so transformations. Um, now just a little reminder of transforming any type of graph. So A, B, C and D are um, constants here and it's a transformation of f of x. So we have a multiplied by the function and inside the function that x is being times by b add c and then after that we're going to add on d. So a reminder of what happens with each of those things. The a, because it's outside of the function, is going to give you something happening vertically. That will be a vertical stretch. Same with the d, that's a vertical one but it, this time it's a vertical shift. So Multiplying gives you a stretch and addition or subtraction gives you a shift. Outside the function means it's vertical. Inside the function is a horizontal change, so multiplying by b is a stretch in the horizontal direction and adding c is a shift in the horizontal direction. So we can apply the same things with our trig graphs. So for example, y equals 3 sine x is going to be a vertical stretch by a factor of 3. So we've got our sine curve. This time, instead of a maximum of 1 and minus 1, it will go up to 3 and minus 3. It's being made 3 times taller. It's still going to go through 180 and 360. It hasn't changed any way in the horizontal direction. How about y equals cos x plus 1? Well, this is going to be the cos curve, but everything got shifted up by 1. So um, now we have a maximum of 2 and a minimum of 0. And where our cos curve itself would have gone through the x-axis at 90, because it's now been shifted up, it's going to cross through the x-axis at 1, or touch the x-axis at 180. Okay, y equals sine of 2x, so inside the function means it's a horizontal stretch. Multiplying by 2 is going to be a horizontal stretch by a factor of a half. So it looks like this. It's going up to 1 and down to minus 1 again, but it's going to um, shorten uh, in the horizontal direction. So it'll go through the x-axis at 90, 180, 270 and 360, whereas the original one just went through at 180 and 360. y equals cos of x minus 90, that's happening inside the function, so it's a horizontal shift. The minus 90 means it's going to be our cos curve moved to the right by 90. So it will look like this, um, where our cos curve would have gone through 0 and 1, that's moved to the right by 90 degrees, so um, the peak of our curve happens at 90 degrees, and then it goes through the x-axis at 180 and 360. Still got maximum and minimum of 1 and minus 1. Okay, so solving trig equations. Very, very important skill. 
you must find all of the solutions within a given range. So this is easiest to show you with some examples. Sine of x is equal to 0.8 and we want to find the solutions to x between 0 and 360 degrees. So first of all, the first thing you do is type that into your calculator, do the inverse sine of it and you get 53.1. That just gives you the first solution, the principal argument it's sometimes called, the principal solution of our equation. Um, the first thing your calculator will read off for you. So let's just draw, draw a sketch of the sine curve to be able to find the other solution. So if we pop our um, 0.8 on there, then we're looking for anywhere where that curve is 0.8. So our first solution was just there of 53.1. Our second solution is just to the right of it, where that 0.8 line hits the curve again. Now these curves are symmetrical, um, so we can use that property there where those two purple shaded bits are going to be exactly identical. So we use that to work backwards to find the other solution. So do 180 minus 53.1 and we get our second solution. So x is 53.1 and 126.9 degrees. Okay, example number two, we're going to do it with a cos curve, this time with a range of minus 180 up to 180. So first of all, on your calculator, you put that in to find the first um, solution. We draw up a little sketch of what cos looks like between minus 180 and 180. We pop on minus 0 0.3 and we're looking for those solutions. So the first one was the calculator um, answer that told us 107.5. Now we can use our graph to work out the other one. They're symmetrical. So that side there is the same as this side on the left, which means that will be minus 107.5. Now one with tan, tan x equals 2, our range is 0 to 360, so on the calculator you can work out the first solution as 63.4. So we put in our line for tan x equals to 2, our first solution is there at 63.4, tan repeats every 180 degrees, so our next one will happen 180 degrees after that. Those two portions shaded there are identical, so we just need to do 180 plus 63.4, and we'll get our second solution. We don't need to go any further than that, because if we add another 180, we would go outside of our 360 range that we were told in the question.